I was uh, I was an engineer, uh, having a normal life, uh, so um, doing normal sort of working hours, and I was climbing as a hobby, practicing yoga, living with my partner. Um, yeah, it was quite nice. <laughs> um, however, I did have to uh, say I was starting to enjoy my job less and less, um, and I do feel like. Um, that might be a contributing factor. I think it was adding stress. And I, I, some, I did feel like I was, I felt a bit stuck, to be honest. There were times where I wasn't able to cook for myself, but that didn't last usually more than a day. So I wouldn't say I wasn't able to cook for myself in general. Um, no, I was oh, definitely not able to do that. So there were times where I just didn't want to get out of the house. Um, I couldn't talk too long with somebody sometimes, you know, um, any intense sort of conversation, I couldn't do that, it was just too exhausting. I got my official diagnosis when I went to the clinic fatigue service. I think what happened is I heard of the clinic fatigue service and asked my GP to get referred. Um, so my GP didn't actually suggest it. I guess initially they were trying to find out where I was at. Um, and uh, it was uh, just, a, I think, a 45 minute maybe meeting. So they suggested the foundation course, a uh, so couple of courses uh, to um, educate on me on the condition and perhaps how to manage it. Um, and so I, I thought that was a good idea. That was a good idea to start monitoring your activity. So they, they um, um, provided us with an activity diary and I uh, filled mine in, so sort of monitoring my activity throughout the week and found it really useful to find out what activities were actually demanding the intensity of the activities because I hadn't really thought about it, but actually very um, activities that were very uh, sort of normal day-to-day -day activities had become really demanding. I was struggling to shower. I was actually, I was taking baths. Um, because I found that less demanding. Uh, cooking and washing up was really demanding. Anything noisy I hadn't realised before was actually very demanding and all of that sort of came out in the diary. Uh, so I found that really useful for that. I had to uh, basically make sure the room was dark and quiet and make sure I was comfortable, warm enough you know, also comfortable mattress. Um, and that was probably one of the first things I, sleep was probably one of the first things I had to sort out. Um, and in fact, uh, to help with sleep and to help with just coping with the day to day, I used a relaxation CD, um, which I did sort of every evening before going to bed, which helped me to wind down uh, for bed. But also when I first did it, I mean, Somebody was telling me, you really should do this. And I was like, oh, yeah, I'm not sure it's going to make a big difference, actually. But I did it. And actually, I was quite surprised. It did make quite a big difference because uh, when I did it, it was more restful than just lying down on the sofa. When I did it, it was more like um, a proper peace of mind. That, that was... Um, more to put into practice the lessons uh, we've had before. So quite a few, quite a big group, lots of people going through the similar things at different stages, maybe in the condition with different levels of severity. It, it made me think, I think, is what I um, would say. It, it made me think um, about what I could do and maybe uh, what others uh, could do to, to help and to get through it. So with the graded exercise, um, I think what, what happened is once I had established my baseline, I decided, well, okay, I'm quite confident that I can cope with this level of activity and it's encouraged to, to try and um, build the activity up gradually. 
So I'm going to try to build it up a little bit. Obviously, I was told not too much too soon. Um, but so I, um, I decided to increase the amount I was walking. I was walking, I think, 10, time, 10, sorry, 10 minutes a day at the time. Um, decided to build that up slowly and reached, I think I reached an hour a day in a few months, actually. So I was quite pleased with myself there. <laughs> there, there was the, the noise issue I had to deal with as well. Um, so being very sensitive to noise, I think because I'd been indoors so much, um, I was, um, I needed to build up sort of resilience to the noise. I think that's how it works. I, I slowly understood that. Uh, and so what I did is uh, integrated into my walk when it was initially just 10 minutes, uh, just trips to the local cafe, just five minutes. Initially, I felt really spaced out um, because I wasn't used to it because the noises were echoing in my head. Uh, and I was like, well, that's OK, it's only for five minutes and um, I'll get used to it because that's how it works. You get used to it. And so I, I did that regularly and then did get used to it fairly quickly and build up the time that I was um, going to the cafe, which meant I could then get out a bit more because I was less sensitive to noise. So that was really positive in that way. And in fact, my, um, I, remember, I remember actually one session where, um, where basically I've been asked, well, what, what have you do to get started? And I, I, didn't, I hadn't quite got started at the time. Because I was like, well, I don't really know where to start. I don't know how to start. And then the question was, well, what's the one thing you really, really would like to do again? And my first instinct there was climbing. I really enjoy climbing. I wanted to climb again. And so that kind of gives me my goal that helped me to drive it forward, if you like, drive my progression forward. And so um, my goal, my first goal was to be able to go to the climbing center and stay there for a bit of time get used to the noise and all the busyness, which I was not used to at all anymore, which would normally trigger sort of headaches and kind of ugh, tension. <laughs> um, and so I did that and got used to it, but I, I went to the climbing center actually without climbing, which is quite unusual. Uh, but very quickly actually decided I could probably do five minutes climbing. Uh, and because uh, I was bouldering, you can do that. It's not too difficult. Um, and uh, yeah, and build up the climbing time. So as well as I was building up my um, walking time, I also built up my climbing time, and that really gave me a lot of satisfaction. And and suddenly I, I was sort of regaining control. Um, so I felt like I could. Whereas before, when I tried to do something, I would crash after it. Uh, I felt well. Suddenly, I know kind of how much I can do roughly before I crash. Um, and so I know that if I try this a little bit, I might suffer a little bit, but I won't really crash. So it'll be okay, and I can build up slowly like that. And so that, that just changed everything. Suddenly you've got the confidence, suddenly you have a plan, suddenly you're heading somewhere. I think it was a gradual process, but I think it's, um, I think as you do little steps to improve, you feel you're regaining control. and, and so there was the relaxation, sorting out my sleep, but also knowing how much activity you can cope with and also having a goal. So all of that changes your mindset. Um, you, you go from, oh, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm afraid, you know, I, don't, I can't understand this thing. And actually, um, in the sessions, that was one thing that was very beneficial as I suddenly started to understand what was going on they mentioned the alarm system and basically all the symptoms that I was experiencing, although it seems like quite a lot and quite scary, they were all down to a kind of body overreacting and alarm system. And that kind of reassured me, actually, some people might feel a bit overwhelmed by the quantity of symptoms that had been written up on the board. But I, I didn't, uh, I found it, I found that it was, um, it was just, nice to understand what was going on. It was nice to know that it was all due to one thing that I could probably change if I worked at it. I'm still uh, sort of trying to keep a little bit of a routine, um, but I don't know whether that's just a healthy habit that everyone does 
or whether it's still a coping strategy. At the end of the day, um, I feel like uh, my level of activity is very comparable to others. And in fact, it's in some ways, I'm, it's more intense than it used to be, to be honest. Um, so, so I feel in that way that I'm recovered. Now, it's true that I get days where I'm like really shattered, but usually it's because I've pushed myself, so I'm expecting it. And it, I kind of recover fairly quickly. And I would say probably similar to others. It's hard to say. I don't have a scale. <laughs> My first advice, to be honest, would be to go to the chronic fatigue service because they really seem to know what they're doing there. They, they have a quite a holistic approach, I would say. They really look at all the possible areas that could help you. So not just graded exercise, actually um, communication, um, what, what your goals might be, what, what your, where, where might you be struggling to manage things. Um, where is there maybe a misunderstanding of what's going on? Uh, so, I, uh, yeah, that would be my first piece of advice. And the other piece of advice is uh, don't, don't lose hope because there's no reason for you to improve, not improve, sorry. I think you, you do have to be determined. It's hard work. Um, and having a goal that you somewhere you really want to get to is important, I think. Um, and... Always, I think, yeah, I think I'm, I almost, it's almost automatic, I don't realize now, but I'm always thinking, what can I do to make things better? And that's kind of automatically going on in my head almost all the time. So what can I do to manage things better? What can I do to improve? What can I do to, um, yeah, to just change things in a good direction, basically. Be creative and don't lose hope if you, you're going to get, you're going to get times where you're overdoing it, whatever. It's not a perfect sort of recovery. Um, but don't let those get to you because that's temporary, really.